This is some absolute ridiculous value for a $450 gaming PC, but the best part is it looks clean AF. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm going to be showing you what's all inside my latest $450 gaming PC build guide. Of course, we're going to be benchmarking the heck out of it. And finally, everything is linked down in the description, just like every video. Also down in the description that I almost never talk about is a link to my Instagram account. I actually vlog every single day on my IG stories, and it's a great way to figure out what's going on behind the scenes with some exclusive AF content. You should check it out. Jumping back to this YouTube video though, as always, I got to hit you with a quick sponsor spot, and then we'll jump into this parts list. As we all know, NordVPN has been a staple when it comes to being a trusted VPN provider, but now they have another highly regarded product called NordPass. NordPass is of course powered by those same NordVPN cybersecurity professionals and provides you with a password vault to store all of those complex and more importantly, different passwords for all of your websites. Some features include desktop and user-friendly mobile apps, zero knowledge architecture, meaning that your passwords are encrypted locally so no one other than you has access to them, and there's even a data breach scan that'll tell you if an online account or credit card has been leaked on the internet. NordPass is hooking you guys up with a crazy sale that's expiring very soon at nordpass.com ZTT. Here you can save 70% off, but that only lasts until February 25th, so make sure you take advantage now by heading to nordpass.com ZTT or simply use code ZTT to save that 70%. All right, so jumping straight into this, the first part we have is the case actually, and this here is the new Antec DP502 Flux White Edition. I actually featured the black version several weeks ago in a previous build guide, which you can check out in the upper right hand corner. This DP502 Flux series is all about maximizing airflow as flux stands for flow luxury and it allows you to get some seriously low temperatures. As you can see here on the website, the design of this case and placement of the fans is completely designed around enhanced GPU cooling performance and it even comes with five pre-installed 120 millimeter fans. It's also rocking a super clean white design with a hinge door up at the top, a tinted tempered glass side panel, and a ton of cable management room in the back, which you know I didn't really take advantage of. This case selection was sponsored by Antec for this video specifically. Thank you Antec for hooking us up with this, and you can snag one for yourself because just like everything else, it's linked down in the description. Moving on next up is the CPU, and this one will definitely require a disclaimer. For today's video, I'm actually rocking an old Intel i7 4790K from a previous build guide like a half a decade ago, but for this specific build guide, I would actually recommend the i5 version, which is the i5 4590. Years ago when these CPUs launched, everyone was either buying a 4590 or a 4790K. Us content creators that could utilize hyper-threading went with the 4790K, but almost every gamer went with the 4590, and that's why they're so easy to find right now at a really good price. After checking on eBay, it looks like it wouldn't be hard at all to find them for around $50, but I bet if you apply some patience and sniping skills, you could probably snag one of these up for under $40. Next up, we have the motherboard, and this didn't require too much sniping. This is the Gigabyte GA B85 HD3, and I I got this on AliExpress for just $46. I think you could repeat this if you wanted to, but as you've probably seen in the B-roll shots so far, this is actually a very weird shaped motherboard. During the Twitch live stream, I stream all of my PC builds on twitch.tv slash zaxstechturf by the way, someone in the chat actually informed me that this is a discontinued motherboard size called Mini ATX. As you can see, this is pretty skinny compared to normal ATX and micro ATX boards, and yet it does look a little funky inside a bigger case like this. For a $450 build though, I don't really care if the motherboard looks a little skinny as I was focused way more on price to performance and aesthetics, but I literally always care about aesthetics, but the motherboard's perfectly fine. Speaking of performance, next up we have the RAM, and this here is the Mushkin Blackline 4x4 gigabyte kit of DDR3 that I found used on Mercari for just $35. This is actually a very solid deal considering DDR3 goes for roughly the same price as DDR4 does right now, and the prices could actually continue to rise over time. This was definitely a pretty solid snipe on my part, so do remember that if you don't have patience, you're most likely gonna have to pay around $45 to $55 for a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR3 RAM. Next up is the power supply, and this definitely requires zero skills at all. This is simply just another EVGA B stock product, this time the EVGA 500BR model. The 500BR is actually tier C rated, so it's perfect for a budget build like this, and it's also rocking black cables, but that doesn't really matter with these cable extensions. Today, I decided to use some leftover extensions that I already had in the studio. I actually tried to use these on my previous Halloween-themed Zacko Lantern gaming PC, but I didn't really like them. These are from a brand called LinkUp. They cost around $25 to $30, and they're a super vibrant orange. 
range. Next up, we have the CPU cooler, and big thanks to Arctic for sending this one out. This is yet another one of their Freezer 34 models, specifically the white version, and you guys know this is gonna keep our CPU very nice and chilly. You guys already know that I'm a big fan of these Arctic coolers, no pun intended, and the design on these all white models is simply just stunning. Next up, we have a much less impressive product, and that's these RGB fans from ID Cooling. I actually picked up this three pack for only $10. This was on a crazy new egg sale, and the only reason I was able to snipe these was because of the ZTT Discord server. Our deals god, aka Dr. Zoomer, has his own dedicated channel over there where he posts only the best deals and saves us all a ton of money. Invite down below. But yeah, these fans are pretty good for $10, but other than that, they are pretty weak. For whatever reason, there's no orange color in the static mode position, so that's why I went with this breathing mode, which I normally don't like. It seems like just a design flaw, but other than that, they definitely get the job done. They light up and move air. Case closed. Also getting the job done is the SSD, and this here is the ADATA SU635. This definitely isn't a meta choice when it comes to 2.5 inch SSDs. Remember, you can't use an M.2 drive with this old of a motherboard, but you can easily find these brand new on Amazon for around $46, so they're super easy for these budget builds. And then finally, we'll save the best part for last, and that of course is the GPU. Today we're going with a PMY GTX 1650 Super, and once again, I bought this on Amazon just as a normal consumer for $180. I do not want to give you this same exact spiel that I did last week, but real quickly, I explained in that video that if you put in the real work that's needed to find GPUs, you can find any GPU you want close to MSRP prices, provided you aren't just checking once after seeing a YouTube video go live and never checking again. This combination of the fourth gen Intel CPU and the 1650 Super should be pretty deadly in some 1080p gaming action, and we're about to find that out after we look at this final parts list. Speaking of which, here it is, and you can see we're a bit higher than our target $450 mark. Do keep in mind that I never include the aesthetic only parts in the final price because you get the same performance without them, and you definitely can 100% save some money if you bought a cheaper case, which would indeed drop it to right around $450. Jumping straight into the benchmarking section, we'll start with Call of Duty Black Ops, specifically some snipers and headshot only gameplay, and here in 1080p and medium settings, I was very happy with the FPS average of 113. All right, so it's Call of Duty Black Ops time. The temperatures are actually looking very nice, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner. And what's also nice is I was hoping I could land a headshot here. I don't really see anybody, though. There's got to be somebody coming here. Anybody? Sit down, son. Headshot. Let's go, baby. The thing about Call of Duty, though, man, is it really exposes you with that comeback metal. Like, a lot of these shots look really nice like that one but when you see the comeback metal it's kind of fake news what sit down i'm just gonna hang out here get some headshots oh sit down son oh sit down oh my god i'm on today guys i'm on i absolutely love this new express map for sniping it's so good now i don't get the most amount of kills whenever i'm just sniping but the fun part is that they're like all headshots Smoke, go away. Smoke, sit down. You sit down too? This gun is actually really good too. I don't know if this is the best sniper in the game, but that guy just got headshot badly. I think I just need like one more kill to wrap up this benchmarking section. There we go. Next game. Following that was Rainbow Six Siege, and just like always using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and ultra settings, I got a very stupid FPS average of 226. Next up was Assassin's Creed Valhalla for our one incredibly demanding to run title, and in 1080p with medium settings, I got just under our target 60 FPS mark. You definitely could get higher than 60 if you wanted to in 1080p and low, but for me personally, 58 is perfectly fine and worth the jump in graphic aesthetics. After that was Borderlands 3. Here you can really see the GTX 1650 Super being put to work as this is a very GPU demanding title and in 1080p and medium settings I got an average FPS of 81. If you wanted to jump it up to high settings I did get 54 FPS just as an FYI. Next up was CSGO and in 1080p with pro settings I got 245 frames per second. All right so definitely got to start off CSGO with an AWP kill from the AWP god itself. Obviously this game is no match. <laughs> for this computer, but neither was that guy. Let's go. Temperatures are obviously looking nice and chilly. That was a legit headshot. Yep, there's no doubt. Watch this. Peak? Oh, that's definitely a bot. What is he doing? Oh my god, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Headshot. That guy's got to be the only one. That was a bot. See, that was a real guy. Killed a real person. Did I just get stuck? What the... F All right, get unstuck and then land the headshot. Oh! 
That was actually nasty. Honestly, Counter-Strike's been becoming just a little too easy. Like, it's just double kill after double kill, man. I mean, do we even need to continue? Maybe like one more kill? Sit down. All right, next game. After that was everyone's favorite Fortnite. I actually got two nice little kills during the actual benchmarking run for this one. And in 1080p with pro settings, I got 199 FPS. Rogue Company came up after that and in 1080p with medium settings and that non-removable 150 FPS cap. I got an average FPS of right under that at 146. And for the last gaming benchmark, we have Valorant and in 1080p with medium settings, I got a very solid 171 FPS average. All right, it's Valorant time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we can continue the momentum looks like we can let's go i'm telling you man these benchmarking sections headshot are like an event like i gotta keep myself pumped up for them and that person's gonna ruin my momentum and just in case if you thought i was serious headshot i was not that was called a troll no one can ruin my momentum i mean i'll do my best to continue to deliver this story as it's happening here live at ZTT headquarters, but yeah, like all of these are actually headshots. Look, I know it might like look like a normal day, but like these are actually all headshots. I'm not even making it up this time. What? Somebody just stole my kill. Sit down. All right, on to my story. After killing that guy. Oh, I am feeling definitely warmed up. I mean, I can't miss if I tried right now. I think I'm going to have to end it here, but man, that was actually a pretty serious performance. Sometimes I do impress myself. Goodbye. And goodbye to you. And you. And you. Okay, I'm done. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. And then just like always, I ran a 3D Mark Times by Benchmark just for a consistent comparison across my build guides. And this $450 gaming PC cranked out a score of 4,624. So as you can see, this PC looks really nice and it also performs awesome for a $450 gaming PC. If you're in the market for a similar price PC, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now and that'll give you another example. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.